for uh, those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Sam Highcrane. Um, grew up um, around Spring Creek, way on the southwest corner of the reservation. You go maybe two miles and you're in Bennett County. Lakota language was my first language. And I think uh, by the time I became about five, six years old, I started to learn the English language. And so um, even today, um, you're going to find that I get stuck with words. So I'm broken Lakota. I don't, I, I can't speak English that well. And when I speak English too much, I forget my Lakota language. So when I talk Lakota, I, I also get stuck in finding words. I learned a lot from uh, my great grandmother. Her name was Laura Hollowhorn Bear. She married uh, Chief um, High Crane, and that's where I got my name from. Well, I hope you gain uh, all of you. I hope you learn something from this class. Uh, it's a beginner's class. But um, uh, I, I try not to teach um, by the book, you know. I'll re refer to the book occasionally. And so um, pretty much um, we'll do a lot of um, uh, body part names, uh, relative terms, and we'll learn all about why these words are so important. Um, <clears throat> and so we're not going to go um, by the books completely. You know, we're going, we're going to be in and out of the book from time to time. And it, and it tells you uh, a lot of things. It tells stories in here. And um, this, uh, from the beginning, you're going to, your homework for next week is going to be read from page one, I think, to um, 11, I think it is, the introduction. I want you to read the stories. And write me a reflection, okay? Um, in our Lakota language, we have um, two languages. We have the women's version and we have the male version. Within the Ocheti Shakoe, which is the seven council fires, um, we have three dialects. One dialect is the Lakota, is who we are here. The Dakota is, is uh, the D speakers. The Nakota is the N speakers. As I mentioned, we're going to um, <coughs> study a lot about um, <coughs> the language, and uh, there's um, history, 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 you know. Um, but there was a lot of um, language that was uh, borrowed also and um, and the slang, slang came from uh, during probably when the alcohol uh, came into existence 
uh, alcohol, a lot of, lot of words were, were misled, were misinterpreted. And um, I always think this, uh, this, you know, we have <coughs> um, the Lakota words. Let's, let's use the uh, unchi. Unchi as an example, okay? Unchi tells us she is the oldest of of the family. She is uh, elder, elderly. And then terms of endearment, L-A, la, unchichi la, okay? Unchichi la, terms of endearment. This unchi means the world to you, or a very loving individual. And and so la, being the terms of endearment, we have a little baby who is called Okay, Hokshichala, a very loving little baby, La. Okay, the Washitu came and called this little baby, this little Hokshichala, called it. Baby. Okay. So what the Lakota do? They came and they weren't fluent speakers of the English, so they called it Okay, Bebela. How many of you heard that word before? Yeah? Bebela. So that's a borrowed name of baby. Bebela. And so we're going to learn uh, different things, um, different languages, why, maybe why they were changed why the slang language became what it is today. Um, and I consider myself a very fluent speaker. And still, I would approach someone and I would say something to the individual and he, he would maybe kind of chuckle about it and, and uh, kind of make fun of how I said. And I mentioned we have three, three dialects, right? Okay, which are, what's the first one? What's one? Okay, the L. The N. The N. D, okay. Those, those are the three dialects. <coughs> <coughs> and even here on this reservation, how the Spring Creek speaks, you can come to St. Francis and speak to one of the people, the fluent speakers in St. Francis. You can go to Parmalee and speak to one of the fluent speakers over there. You can come to Antelope. And you know what? They all have their own language. I found out, I thought we all spoke the same language. And I 
Remember I told you that I used to send um, uh, handouts and I had the word Itchunkala. Itchunkala meaning mouse. A couple of days later, one of the kids came back and he says, I showed my grandma the list of words you gave me and she said, that's not right. So I said, really? So I said, so what, what did she tell you it was? And he said, it's supposed to be Nitrunkala. So now the mouse already changed because of the community, how they talk. The other one from Antelope came back and he said, No, that's not right. It's It's we trunkala. So I said, okay, that's good. We'll just add them all, all together. Because my language, you know, that's the language I use to grow up, you know, with. But if you have another word for it, but it all means the same thing. Itchunkala. See right here? It's in there, but the beginning, the beginning parts change. And so, you could imagine, you go to Oglala, and you talk to them in Lakota, and they, they also talk in Lakota. It's going to change. They have a little, some of their words mean something a little different. When you go towards uh, Valentine, you run across this, uh, this little creek back there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's called um it's called Mani Kadusa. Okay. Mani Kadusa. The Lakota says Meninkalus there. Meninkalus there meaning running water. They say long time ago uh, way back from the beginning of time, um, um, the people used to come back together during the summer to around here. During the winter, they would all go in different directions, uh, mainly um, to where it's a little warmer. And um, <clears throat> I used to live in New Mexico, and, and they used to tell me, yeah, we, we heard of your, my grandfather used to talk about the Lakotas, you know, the Dakotas and Nakotas. 
And they come through here, you know, in the early fall, and and they stay here. And our people used to trade with them, and they camp out over there. You know, they even showed me where they used to camp. And we would have powwows and giveaways, and you know, exchanging gifts, and. Uh, <clears throat> And so they must uh, travel quite distances and, um, and they would all return back over here in the summer. And, and one summer all the people gathered and they had their ceremonies and when they were um, all splitting up the people all got together and they said, well, let's um, all break, break up into four groups. And we're going to explore. They said one group will go to the east, one group will go to the south, the west, and the north. And so, yeah, all right, okay, you know. And so they all left. And they said, when we get to our destination, or if you, for as far as you can go and learn, learn about that area, learn about the land, learn about the animals, whatever's there, you learn about it and you bring it back and we're all going to meet back here. So the people went to the east and west. They came back and they said they had gone to large <coughs> bodies of water. The people that went to the north. They said they, they came back because there was a <coughs> there was a aliaska. Aliaska means a white ridge, okay, that they couldn't pass. And the people that went to the south, they never came back for years and years and years. And they were pretty much uh, given up for lost hope. And, and one day, uh, some of the warriors came back and they said there's a group of people coming from the north but we don't know who they are so they all got together and they went and confronted them and here was the people that went the other way they were still going south <laughs> and they came back and they talked about uh, their experiences. They went south and they they found Shunkawichasha. They found Shunkawichasha. Shunkawichasha is something that looked like a man and, and it has a tail like a dog. Shunkawichasha. Okay? And what was that? Any guesses? No? Shape, shape shifter? A what? Bigfoot? I 
Bigfoot could be. Remember, it looks like a, a man and has a tail like a dog. Like Monkey. <laughs> So it was so it was a monkey they came across. And um, and they went further. They went further and they said it was the the woods was so so thick, so bad. And they made it through. And um, but some of the people couldn't go any further. But the others, they kept on going. And they came to a place where it was so hot, not even grass could grow. It was so hot. And so, again, they left some of the people there. And they came, and they came to a place where it was so cold that, <coughs> that you pretty much freeze in your tracks. And um, there was this Aliaska. And so they made it through and they came back. And today, uh, <clears throat> you hear Aliaska. <laughs> Alaska, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear about, what was it, the mam mammoth that they found in, in the Arctic not very long ago, if you were <coughs> around 30 years old, maybe that was about the time that all this took place. Uh, there was, they found an Indian, a Native American, fully dressed and, and was found frozen in the ice, in the iceberg. And they traced the DNA, traced it back to here. And they found some artifacts in, in the deserts in Asia. Those also trace back to the Lakota people. You ask, the Chicanas, Chicanos, and they'll tell you there's Indian people that are in way down in Mexico that they don't know where they came from. And so whose story was it that said we came through the Bering Straits? They say, yeah, the scientist keeps telling us we came from Asia. But I think we were here even way before then. <clears throat> oh.